Hi. Today I'm going to be talking about the Amaran T4C and T2C tube lights from Aputure. Here's a list of the topics we'll be going over. Feel free to use the chapter timestamps to skip to the parts you're most interested in. We'll start by going over some details about these tube lights. Next, we'll talk about how to make your own DMX cable to control these lights, which currently doesn't appear to be widely available. I'll show you a demo of the setup working, and then I'll talk about the internal architecture of the lights, and some of the problems that I've experienced. The LED tubes are rated at 40 watts of output, at typical efficiencies of about 120 lumens per watt for high CRI emitters, that's probably close to 4,800 lumens. Amaran says the lights will pull up to 50 watts of input power. They have five channels for warm white, cool white, and RGB, which can be mixed. The lights are designed for video, so in order to reduce flicker, the PWM frequency can be adjusted in the settings. The lights have a removable 14.8V lithium battery, and a 24V power adapter. Additionally, they support DMX control using a proprietary USB-C adapter cable, and a Citus Link Bluetooth LE mesh app for smartphones. At the time that this video is being created, the official DMX cable is not widely available. Thus, in order to use the DMX feature, we'll need to make our own, following the pinout. We will use a standard USB-C breakout board, available on AliExpress or Amazon for a few dollars. 5 volts at 800 milliamps are available at the VCC pins on the USB-C connector. We connect the DMX RS485A and B pins as shown in the slide. If you decide to use a USB-C cable, make sure it supports USB 3.0, since charge-only cables won't come with the right wires. The light cannot be powered by the USB-C port, but a USB PD trigger or PD to DC 5525 cable can be used with DC in port at 20 volts, it will also work for battery charging. You can use a GAN charger to replace the original power supply with a small and light power supply, 60 watts or more. In this demonstration, a USB-C male to female breakout board and a USB for cable are connected to light key running on a Mac through a standard USB to RS-485 adapter. The A pin is connected to A11, and the B pin is connected to A10. The light can be controlled over DMX. The light must be in the DMX settings menu in order to receive DMX commands. When the light is power cycled, this menu is preserved. Next, we demonstrate a direct connection using a USB-C breakout board. We connect the A pin to A11 and the B pin to A10, and again, the light can be controlled over DMX. Let's take a look inside the T4C to see how it works. To start, let's disassemble the battery pack. First, we remove the mounting clip from the center and remove the two screws under it. Then, we remove eight screws holding the ends together. Carefully remove the four battery indicator lights and slide the internal components out. We can now see the blue battery pack with integrated BMS. It has a fours, 2P configuration of 18,650 cells and a temperature sensor connection. The input PCB has a MPSMP2456 DC-DC buck converter to step down the voltage for the microcontroller. We can also see the Nuvaton MS51 FB9AE microcontroller used for battery temperature detection, battery level meter, and SM4303 PSU P-channel MOSFET for power switching. 30 volts, 9 milliohm. On the back, we can see another MOSFET, the DC jack, and a 5 milliohm current sense resistor and current sense amplifier to measure the output current. The idle current of the PCB is 3.5 milliamps. The charger board uses a Maxim Max 8725 battery charger to step down the 24V input to charge the battery. The same SM4303 PSU P-channel MOSFETs, 9 milliohms and 30 volts, are used for power path switching. We can see the filter capacitors and a 60 milliohm current sensing resistor used to set the battery charging current. A 22 microhenry inductor and a WSD80120 DN56N channel MOSFET are on the back. 85 volts, 3.7 milliohms. The battery pack uses a traditional power path switching architecture. 
When the light is operating on battery, it runs directly off the 14.8 volt battery. When the adapter is plugged in, it runs on 24V up to 2 amps. This way, the light can detect whether it is running on batteries or AC power. There is no communication between the battery pack and the light. The maximum charge current is 1 amp and shared with the light. The battery doesn't charge when the brightness is full. To disassemble the T4C light, we begin by removing the torque screws holding the end cap closest to the controller. Then, slide the white cover off of the light carefully, being careful not to crack it. The lamp body is made of extruded aluminium. Remove the torque screws holding the control panel onto the back of the light and disconnect the flat flexible cable. Disconnect the LED cable and remove the one screw holding the controller board. Slide the controller out and remove the plastic insulation sleeve. Now, let's have a closer look at the PCB in detail. The main control board has a MAX 14783E high-speed RS485 transceiver to communicate over DMX. The USB-C connector supports DMX and 5V power output only, and cannot be used to power the light. Below it, a Winbond 25Q64 SPI flash chip is provided for the Bluetooth SoC. We can also see the power switch and the diodes AP2141 USB protection IC, used to supply the 5 volts at a limited current of 0.8 amps for the USB-C port. The main control board uses the Realtek RTL8762C Bluetooth Elite 5.0 SoC to communicate with the Citus Link app. It has an ARM Cortex-M4F processor embedded. The FPC antenna is connected using an IPEX connector. On the back of the main control board, there is a GD32F103 main processor with ARM Cortex-M3 processor up to 108 MHz. The OLED screen is soldered to the PCB. It is estimated that this is a SSD 1306 0.96-inch OLED display. The bottom of the screen is marked RIT-253. Next, let's take a closer look at the power PCB. There are three main power supplies on the left side, a 5V step-down regulator labeled SCT-17C to generate 5 volts, a NP660-1542D to generate 7.5 volts, and a TILP-5907-250 mA LDO to generate 3.3 volts. We can also see the two main LED boost converters. Both are non-synchronous boost converters. The switching MOSFET is SL1018A, 100V, 14mOhm. There is a filter bead to suppress interference, and a power inductor and bulk capacitance. The converter on the left generates a fixed 38V for the RGB LEDs, and the converter on the right generates a fixed 58V for the white LEDs. On the back, we can see the current mode LM5022 boost controller from TI, along with a current sensing resistor. Under the heat sink, there are six pieces of SM15106T constant current LED driver chips. They are used for linear current regulation, and can be switched on and off using PWM for dimming. 3 to 80 volts DC, maximum current 1.2 amps. On the back of the PCB, we can see two strings of 3 ohm total resistance. They are used in series with the LEDs to help dissipate heat evenly with the LED driver chips. The LED driver adopts constant voltage supply followed by linear constant current regulation with PWM dimming. PWM dimming is preferred for color accurate lighting because white and color LEDs may show color shifts when dimmed by reducing the current. However, because unlike chips such as TILP8867, this LED driver does not have adaptive voltage control. Adaptive voltage control changes the output voltage of the boost converter to reduce the voltage drop in the linear regulator, or resistors, increasing efficiency when dimming the LEDs. The efficiency of the LED driver is poor, close to 80%. At 24 volts input, the current is 2 amps. When the light is off, the current is 60 milliamps. The minimum voltage is 13.3 volts, 4 amps. There is no change in power when the color temperature is changed. With different saturated colors, the maximum current is as shown. The current increases smoothly when white is mixed into the color. 
On the back of the PCB, there is a current sensing resistor and current sense amplifier marked 9A2LE, used to detect the input current and help make sure the fixture does not exceed the adapter's power rating by allowing the microcontroller to regulate the output power of each channel. Near the output for the LEDs, there are diodes for protection and some signal processing circuits, which are estimated to be for reading the temperature of the LEDs. Finally, the LED PCB contains 108 groups of one RGB LED and four white LEDs. Two of the LEDs are warm white and two are cool white. It is estimated that each channel of white LEDs is arranged in 12 groups of 18 series LEDs. It is also estimated that the RGB LEDs are arranged in 9 groups of 12 series LEDs. In total, there are 540 LED packages on the board. Here are some of the common problems identified with this light fixture. First, the battery pack will drain completely in 3 months or so, even if it is unplugged and charged. This is because the circuits in the battery consume 3.5 milliamps all the time, even when off. When you need to store the battery, you can charge it and then open it and disconnect the battery connector internally. This way, the battery will not drain fully and become impossible to charge. Second, the thermal adhesive used to hold the LED PCB to the heat sink is of poor quality and cannot hold the PCB in contact. This may cause the LEDs to overheat and become damaged. You might want to replace the adhesive with high-quality silicone thermal adhesive to protect the longevity of the LEDs. Third, the efficiency of the LED driver is low. The light takes 50 watts but only can output 40 watts to the LEDs. There isn't anything that can be done about this. Fourth, the OLED screen on the back of the control panel on the current newest firmware doesn't go to sleep if the Bluetooth or DMX are connected. There is no screen saver, and the OLED screen is near the LED driver which gets hotter than 60 degrees Celsius. This causes the screen to burn in quickly. This might be resolved with a firmware update, but I have experienced burn in already with only one month of usage. The OLED screen will need to be replaced from time to time. That's it for today's video. If you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching.